Hey, what's up, guys? Kool-Aid here, and today we're going to do part two of our Sunders Guide, which means we will be focusing on the weapons. So let's get to it. We'll start with the Basilisk, which is the starting or stock weapon that everybody is going to have, filling both their weapon slots on their Sunder. So the Basilisk holds 50 rounds and works like a standard machine gun. The nice thing about the Basilisk is that it is very versatile. You can kill everything in the game and in fact in close range you're actually going to kill everything fairly quick it only takes about four hits to kill an infantry at close range you can drop down an ESF in about 30 rounds about half a mag um, even a MBT you can finish off in less than one magazine if you're shooting it from behind but where the basilisk really starts to lose its appeal is once you start getting the medium and longer ranges the major downside with the basilisk is that it has very slow projectile speed and it is very inaccurate and you're gonna see once this ESF is backed up and this is still considered probably fairly close for what a lot of air is gonna be actually hitting you from um, you're gonna see it takes me almost two full magazines to take down this ESF and this ESF of course is completely stationary so if it was flying around it would be even worse and it just goes to show how inaccurate and how slow the projectile speed actually is on this weapon now if you are on a budget if you don't feel like spending a lot of money on your Sunder having one of these with something else like a Bulldog or a Fury is not a bad option and I actually do like these weapons in close quarters um, it's just once you start getting to those ranges which are very very common ranges this weapon really starts to lose its appeal so next we have the Cobalt and this is a gun that works similar to the Basilisk and that is a standard machine gun type weapon. It is going to hold twice as many rounds per magazine as the Basilisk at a hundred rounds and it is going to be a lot more accurate and have faster projectile speed. So this is going to be a lot better at killing infantry. That is this gun's specialty. Now what you're going to lose with this gun is the ability to kill any armor. The only ground vehicle you're going to be able to kill with the Cobalt is the flash and you're gonna lose the ability to kill any air aside from the ESFs which it does not do especially well so the only way I would actually recommend equipping a cobalt is if you absolutely knew you were going into an a heavy infantry battle or if you were possibly parking your Sunder inside and had to defend it against infantry that's the only way um, I'm just not a huge fan of this. On something like uh, an MBT, it's not quite as bad because you already or you're guaranteed to have another weapon that can kill armor. So again, I'm just not a huge fan of the Cobalt on a Sunder, and I wouldn't recommend using it for really any loadout. The next two weapons I'm going to talk about are the Bulldog and the Fury, and I'm going to lump these two together and just kind of compare the two because I think one of the biggest questions when it comes to Sunder weapons are you know is which one is better the bulldog or the fury so I'm gonna do my best to try and clarify just exactly what the differences are so the bulldog the main three advantages the bulldog is gonna have is that it does more damage it's only gonna take about five rounds from a bulldog to the rear of an MBT to kill it it's got a bigger blast radius at six meters and this did just actually get reduced from eight down to six and it is going to hold one more round per magazine at six rounds the fury is only going to hold five rounds so those are the three major advantages of the bulldog now the fury even though it does less damage is still going to one hit kill an infantry if you hit them dead on so as far as killing infantry the damage of the bulldog doesn't really matter too much the blast radius is definitely smaller on the Fury. It's about half the size of the Bulldog. So if you're not hitting your targets dead on, it only really matters if you are missing by a lot or if you are shooting into giant groups of infantry. Then the Bulldog will start to outshine the Fury against infantry. The Fury, however, has a much higher rate of fire and is fully automatic. So you can just hold down the trigger and that higher rate of fire I think makes it much easier to stay on target if your target is moving. Now it does take about three magazines from a Fury to the rear of an MBT to actually kill it which it sounds like 
that would be a you know big disadvantage. But with that high rate of fire and the fact that the Fury actually reloads a lot faster than the Bulldog, the time to kill between the Bulldog and Furies on tanks and are on armor is really not that much difference. Definitely better on the Bulldog. I would rather have the Bulldog against armor, but there isn't that big of a disparity. The Fury also has a little bit faster projectile speed as well as less recoil and less arc, but again, the the Bulldog has that bigger splash radius, so when you're getting out to those longer ranges, it's still kind of a wash. Um, again, it's just kind of a personal preference. I actually run one of each of these on my Sunder. I prefer to gun on the Fury a little bit more over the Bulldog, just because I do think the Fury is a little bit better at getting those one-hit kills on infantry. And... Obviously, there's more infantry typically than there is armor. If you're running into a lot of armor in a Sunder, you might be screwed anyway. So I do prefer the Fury just a tad. But like I said, I run one of each of these on my Sunders, and it is pretty much just a wash. You can't really go wrong with either one, and both of them are a lot of fun. The last two weapons we have to talk about are the Walker and the Ranger, and I'm not going to make a Chuck Norris joke, but uh, we're going to kind of compare these two as well because they are both considered anti-air weapons. Now, one of the main differences between these two is the Walker can actually kill everything in the game, and it actually, out to a certain range, actually does it quite well. It's a lot like the Basilisk in that regard, but the Ranger, like I said, can only kill aircraft and infantry, and it does that very poorly, at least the infantry part. Now, the Walker also has a much higher rate of fire and holds 75 rounds per magazine. The Ranger fires very slowly and has very slow projectile speed and only holds 29 rounds per magazine. The Ranger's only real advantage is that it is going to be a little bit easier to hit aircraft at further ranges and it is going to cause some little mini explosions around whatever you're hitting. So if you're hitting a Liberator, it's going to make their gunner have a little bit harder time of actually staying on target. Now the Walker, like I said, can actually kill everything in the game, but what one important thing to know about both the Walker and the Ranger is that you cannot actually tilt down below a 90 degree angle on the side of your Sunder, such as every other weapon that you can equip on your Sunder. So any infantry rushing in, you're going to have a very, very hard time to get in, you know, to get at them once they get inside that close range area. You're basically going to have to jump out and take them out with your infantry weapon. So when it comes to the AA guns, I would probably give the nod to the Walker. Um, the only way I would really suggest equipping a Ranger is if you're going all out AA on your Sunder and you did a combination, maybe one Walker and one Ranger. But if you're just going one over the other, definitely go with the Walker. It's just much more versatile. As for attachments, it's actually really simple. For everything aside from the Ranger and maybe the Walker, I would use night vision and magazine capacity. You know, there's really no reason to use zoom optics on any of the Cobalt, Fury, Basilisk, or Bulldog because really once you start getting out to range these weapons become very ineffective anyway and night vision actually helps you see in the day just as much as it helps you see at night you know you're gonna see those camouflage targets it's gonna help you pick out targets further away I just I pretty much use this on every gun I absolutely love it and then as far as magazine capacity versus reload speed I really like magazine capacity that's what I'm using on my fury and my bulldog I actually have this upgraded three times on my fury and it makes my fury an absolute beast um, but yeah that's what I would recommend now for the ranger you're obviously not going to use night vision because you're not going to be killing too many infantry with this and for the walker it's kind of a toss-up. The walker is pretty versatile, so you might still want to throw night vision on there. But if you go with zoom, it's probably not a bad option either. So anyways, guys, that's pretty much all I have. Um, I will be doing separate loadout videos for the Sunder. I have at least two that I plan on doing. So you guys know the exact loadouts that I'm using for my you know, different Sunder setups because they are so versatile. I have, I have a lot of loadouts that I use for my Sunder. So anyways, guys, that is all I have. If you enjoyed this, please hit that thumbs up button and subscribe if you have not already. And as always, guys, thanks for watching. I will talk to you all later. I need the terminals and medics. Generator stabilized.
think we're done. Are we done? We're done. She gets killed. Anybody left? Yep, I'm left. Oh, medic. I'm dead. I'm still up, medic. barely. Medic, medic, medic. Up. 